Can people who don't own this place just pack up their stuff and leave? You barely make any money, yet you have the nerve to squat in a luxury apartment? I agree. I'll start packing right away. I calmly said and headed to the bedroom. As we crossed paths, Laura smirked at me, saying, Even Eric, making 200000 a year, had to give up his high-rise condo. Poor Lenora. <laughs> Who's really the poor one here? I muttered under my breath. Hearing this, Laura scoffed. What? Quit your whining and just pack your stuff already. With Laura's tone in the background, I silently packed up my things. I then placed the suitcase full of their belongings in front of Eric. Here, I've packed all your stuff. Both of you, get out of the apartment now. The story goes back to my student days. My name is Lenora. A family of four, including my younger sister Laura, my parents, and me. Laura and I have been unlike each other in appearance and character since we were young. I'm tall and unsociable, while Laura is petite and charming. My parents adored Laura like a princess, and she grew up believing that being doted on was normal. I had better grades in school. But when Laura noticed, she began to showcase her superiority in areas other than academics. Whenever my parents tried to compliment my academic achievements, Laura would immediately steer the conversation to how popular she was at school. Who cares about grades? Listen to this. I've been chosen for the lead role in the school play for the cultural festival. Everyone recommended me. My parents quickly showed interest in Laura's exciting news. Wow, that's amazing. Way to go, Laura. You've always been loved by everyone. Good communication skills are more important than studying nowadays, right? Lenora, do you even have friends? You're always reading books, even in middle school. While my parents also showered me with love, Laura seemed not to appreciate even that. Lenora, what would you like for your upcoming birthday gift? Um, I'd like a winter coat. Let's go shopping for it soon. Upon hearing our conversation, Laura immediately told Mom. I'd like a coat for my birthday next month, too. Really? Well, let's go shopping together, then. The family shopping trip was entirely dictated by Laura's pace. I want to shop here. The store Laura chose had designs that I'd never wear. Too cute for my taste. Um, I was thinking of something a little more subdued. Oh, come on. It's a hassle to go to different stores, so just pick something from here, Lenora. With that, Laura had me try on a coat she spotted. How about this? Try it on. I'm not really a fan of it. Just try it on. It'll look good on you. Trust me. I ended up reluctantly buying the coat Laura had me try on, even though I didn't like the design. On the way home from shopping, Laura discreetly approached me. Lenora, I'm glad you bought it, but that design might not have been the best fit for your plain looks. <laughs> even someone like me eventually got a boyfriend in high school. Hey Lenora, is it true you're dating the baseball team's co-captain? Um, yeah, I guess. Hmm... A few days later, Laura announced to me, I'm dating the captain of the baseball team now, Lenora. Oh, really? Your boyfriend is a co-captain, and mine is a captain. I win. Sure you do. Laura always seemed to be competing with me, but it didn't really bother me. Despite my nonchalant attitude, Laura continued to harbor hostility towards me. After I graduated college and got a job at an IT firm, Laura landed a job as a receptionist at a well-known company two years later. My company is way more famous than yours, Lenora. Even the recruiters know what's up. I'll have my pick of highly educated, high-earning men. I'll marry rich and then quit. Laura said this with a sense of triumph. It seemed Laura's primary goal was not to work, but to find a wealthy husband at the company. As she declared, Laura dated various men, both inside and outside the company. 
and she reported each new relationship to me. Don't you have a boyfriend, Lenora? I find my job fascinating at the moment, so I'm not too concerned about having a boyfriend. <laughs> at this, Laura laughed sarcastically. That's such a not popular excuse, Lenora. In that small company of yours, you're never going to find a decent man. <laughs> but a year later, I met Eric, and things moved quickly. We got engaged. When I introduced Eric to my family as my fiancé, Laura was genuinely surprised. Lenora, didn't you say you didn't need a boyfriend? At that time, I really felt that way. Eric quickly jumped in to ease the tension. Laura, love is unpredictable, you know? A cute girl like you would understand what I'm saying. Uh, um, yes? Laura blushingly responded to Eric's smooth smile. Then she leaned in to whisper to me. Lenora, where did you find such a handsome guy? Is he from your company? No, we don't work at the same place. I thought so. There's no way your company could have someone that great. So, is he from a big-name firm? His eloquence makes me think he's global or something, right? Laura seemed to assume from my vague response that Eric was from a high-profile company. Thanks to Eric's natural social skills, talks about our wedding with my parents went smoothly. We opted for a small ceremony with just close friends and family. Laura kept complaining. I want to meet Eric's colleagues. Then, Eric and I began our newlywed life. After moving in, we invited my parents and Laura to our new home. Laura was shocked. No way! This is your new place? This isn't just any upscale apartment in Boston. How much does he earn? Laura pressed me excitedly. Does he make around 500 k a year? Come on, tell me! No way, not that much. So, 400 k No. Finally. Fine. 200 k Right? Well, about that, yeah. Laura, having pried the salary out of me, was muttering to herself. Handsome, eloquent, and high-earning? Lenora gets everything. Then, she unilaterally declared a sort of competition. I'll find a guy who's more handsome and earns more than Eric. You'll see. After that, Laura became more active in looking for a marriage partner, often attending matchmaking parties. However, a few months later, she started to visit us frequently and it seemed she was even coming over when I was at work. Hey, Eric, did Laura visit again today? How long was she here? Hmm, oh, I don't remember exactly when. I chatted with her a bit, and then she left soon after. Ah, yes, I appreciate your always being there for my family. What are you talking about? Your family is my family, Lenora. Eric's words put me at ease, and I stopped worrying about how often Laura was visiting our home. One day, after coming home from work, I found Eric and Laura sitting together in the living room, waiting for me. Laura, you're here again. What's going on with you two? As I asked, Eric looked serious. Lenora, we need to talk. Please have a seat. Talk about what? The truth is, I want to break up. What? What are you saying? I want to divorce you. And marry Laura. Are you kidding me? I have a child with Laura. What? Laura chimed in, grinning. Sorry, Lenora. I'm in love with Eric. We want to be a happy family with our child, so we need you to step aside. It turns out, Laura had been cheating with Eric all along. While I stood in disbelief, Laura continued. Ever since you introduced Eric to me, I've been looking for someone better. But finding someone as wonderful as Eric, making 200 k a year was hard. Now that I think about it, Laura did seem unusually interested in Eric. Laura kept going. Then, I bumped into Eric one day while walking. He was so comforting when I was feeling down. That's when I realized I could just take Eric away from you. What a selfish mindset. My anger began to boil. Laura didn't notice. So, I went again, huh? If you step aside, it proves I'm better than you. I was trembling with rage. Laura's selfish behavior had always been an issue. But I'd let it slide because we're family. Not this time. I cannot sit idly by and be treated in such a terrible way. I wouldn't forgive either of them. Fine. I said calmly. Oh, great. I knew you'd step aside easily. After all, a plain person like you doesn't deserve someone as great as Eric. 
So now that it's settled, you'll be packing up and leaving this fancy apartment that's too good for you, right? Hearing Laura's words, Eric quickly responded, Whoa, hold on. Whether or not I own this apartment doesn't matter. Let's sit down and talk this through. Laura shot him down immediately. Are you kidding me? You don't even make much money, and you want to stay in a luxury apartment? How shameless. I agree. I'll start packing now. I said quietly and headed to the bedroom. Passing by, Laura said to me with a laugh, <laughs> Aww, poor Lenora, having to give up a $200,000 a year guy like Eric and a fancy high-rise apartment. Who's the real loser here? I mumbled under my breath. Hearing that, Laura scoffed. Excuses, excuses. Just go pack your stuff. With Laura's voice in the background, I silently packed up. I put all the packed belongings in front of Eric. Here, all of your stuff is in here. Now leave this apartment. Laura looked stunned at my words. What are you saying? You're the one who's supposed to leave. No, it's Eric and Laura who need to leave. Both of you. What are you talking about? You're the one who said it's shameless to stay in a luxury apartment without making much money, Laura. Eric, you get what I'm saying, right? Could you please explain it to clueless Laura here? Eric spoke in a voice so quiet it could disappear. This apartment isn't mine. What do you mean? I didn't buy this apartment. Lenora did, so it's in her name. Laura's face contorted. Why would you put it in Lenora's name? Eric should be the owner since he makes more. Eric's voice kept getting softer. My income is actually less than Lenora's. What? But you make 200k a year. That 200k is Lenora's salary, not mine. You're lying. Finally, it seemed like Laura understood. Our household income is about $200,000. But most of that comes from me. After landing a job at an IT company and overseeing a successful app business, my income had increased significantly. And that's when I met Eric. Back then, I started dating Eric because his cheerful personality was a relief to me during my hectic work days. I figured that once we got married, he would give up his part-time job lifestyle. But as my income increased, Eric worked less and less. By the time I had told Laura everything, she had turned pale. Wait! Eric has a job, right? He's not unemployed. He pretty much is. I stuck around with him because he was emotionally supportive when I was busy. But he's just a man of empty words who eats through our savings. You've done me a favor by taking him off my hands. But Eric always paid for high-end restaurants on our dates and even bought me designer clothes. That means he has savings, right? Hearing Laura, I couldn't help but smirk. That's just Eric, always putting on a show. He's been reckless with his credit card just to impress people. I was the one cleaning up his financial mess. From now on, our accounts will be separate. You two figure out how to handle the bills. Wait, you mean he was blowing through money on a credit card without savings? Who does that? Who knows? I can't figure out the mind of a man dumb enough to cheat with his wife's sister. Oh, and the mind of a woman dumb enough to cheat with her sister's husband is beyond me, too. So you mean my dreams of marriage to a man earning 200 k and living a luxurious life in a high-rise condo are shattered? Without any mercy, I kicked both the pitiful Eric and the crumbling Laura out of my apartment. I quickly finalized my divorce with Eric and also filed for alimony. Neither of them had any say, given they had confessed to their infidelity. They had no choice but to comply with the financial demands. Even after learning that Eric was unemployed, Laura had no option but to marry him because she was pregnant with his child. She hoped that fatherhood would make him more responsible. However, Eric's lazy habits didn't change. Originally, he cheated with Laura, thinking she was richer than me, as she worked for a top-tier company. But he had no intention of working himself. He continued his part-time lifestyle, draining Laura's modest savings to pay off the divorce settlement, leaving no room for credit card debt repayment. Now newlyweds, Laura and Eric, sank into a life of debt. They couldn't even afford a new place and had to live in Laura's old apartment. Laura, who quit her job expecting Eric's income, now had to work part-time from dawn till dusk to handle their rising debts and her growing belly. The couple is constantly fighting, becoming the talk of the neighborhood. 
On the other hand, my savings started to soar as soon as I got rid of Eric. I had plenty of money for self-improvement, and men started showing more interest in me, some of whom even had a higher income than me. If Laura were in my shoes, she would have jumped at the chance. But I know better than to choose a partner based on their income. I won't rush into another marriage like I did with Eric and make the same mistake. I won't get married until I find someone who truly matches me. I have decided that, and now I am single-mindedly continuing my work.